October, or Crocktober, as it's sometimes referred to, is applauded as the start of the slow cooker season. Slow cooking applications have grown to massive popularity in recent years, largely propelled by social media and online cooking platforms. Not only have these applications helped create a new generation of at-home cooks, but they've helped promote the versatility of various proteins in ways that stretch beyond traditional cooking. The source of indirect marketing has renewed enthusiasm for cooking with meat and has promoted overall protein sales. This year, promotions are coming in from all corners of the industry as Campbell's, Crock-Pot, Walmart, and tons of other food companies and grocers get involved by promoting slow cooker recipes and ideas through the month of Crocktober. For this week's complete retail situation, subscribers should click on the Retail Features link in Comtel. In other news, the National Chicken Council has launched two new online resources. Here's Account Manager Megan Mick with the details. As part of its Chicken Check-In initiative, the National Chicken Council announced the launch of a new blog, The Cluck, and a new Instagram account. The council says that along with chicken's popularity, variety, and so many choices, come questions, confusion, and sometimes misperceptions. People want to know more than just that the food they purchase is safe for them, they want to know it was raised humanely and sustainably. To help answer those questions, and cut through some of the confusion, NCC launched The Cluck and an Instagram page where consumers can get answers and see pictures from chicken farmers from across the country going about their daily business on their farms and caring for their flocks. For more on this and other news from the center of the plate, please visit foodmarket.com. Thanks, Megan. Finally, Seafood News Editor Michael Ramsing is here with a closer look at the Barents Sea Cod situation. The single biggest change in whitefish forecasts presented during this week's groundfish form in Hamburg, Germany, was for Barents Sea Cod, where it was reported that Norwegian Russian catches would drop 11% in 2017. However, a closer look at the situation suggests this might not be the case. This is because a third-party survey analysis of the quota recommendations found that the biomass, age structure, and spawning stock of Barents Sea Cod may all be more favorable than assumed. It's it seems that the abundance of young cod might be higher than the International Council for the Exploration of the Seas' report suggests, since those fish are outside the original scope of the waters that were assessed. This same survey also did not include cod aged near nine years and older. Taken together, and this means that there is a large biomass of the fish in the Barents Sea than originally thought. The Council is now reviewing its Northeast Arctic cod model, and even if they make a recommendation for this year that is similar to last year, there is increasing scientific support for maintaining cod quotas at their current level rather than cutting them. Sign up for SeafoodNews.com to get more stories out of the Groundfish Forum or subscribe to Erna Berry's Comtel for more premium market news, quotations, and analysis. Thanks, Mike. That concludes today's show. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to Erna Berry's Comtel for a comprehensive look at the latest market and industry news. Prospector Online is a must-have tool designed to help you explore and evaluate new business opportunities in the protein market. Customized searches based on a specific criteria that fits your needs. Call or email us today to learn how you can unlock the possibilities at prospector.earnerberry.com.